We fight how we train. Bam Rodriguez versus Rung Desai. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Bam Rodriguez's pendulum step or his pivots here. He's going to take this angle here and that sets him up and loads him up for that big right hook there uh, that he was able to hit Rung Desai with. Uh, an excellent, excellent shot. Uh, as well as this one that actually dropped him with his weight on the front foot, takes that pendulum step, shifts his weight toward the back foot, and then comes in with this left hand right here, again, dropping Rung Desai in the seventh round. Uh, and both of these punches actually came pretty close to each other, uh, but using those very dynamic angles, taking it with those pendulum steps, and getting around the guard, um, and being able to not only do that, but put him, line his footwork up correctly, but also get himself into position to land a much, much bigger punch. Uh, so we're going to take a look at a couple of the drills that he does on the mitts to kind of practice this stuff. So one of those things that he does here, again, getting his weight to the front foot here, and he's going to kind of roll out, very similar to the video, right? He did it off of a jab in the fight, uh, but he's going to do it off of a right hand here roll, and now look at how he winds up with his uh, left shoulder towards across the line, across the... the target here right and it's going to put most of his weight toward the front foot here and that sets him up to be uh rotate his shoulders back and throw a big shot here we can't really see his footwork too much um, but that's what he's kind of setting up there again getting to the front foot here and then back to the back foot when he throws the hook uh, and practicing these uh, pendulum steps as i call them and teach them on uh patreon a lot of people call them pivots uh, some people call them shuffles uh, but here he is practicing it again in another version, very similar to the one where he knocked the guy down, rung the side down, but getting to the back foot here and then coming into the line with the left hand here. Um, and then following it up in this, in this sequence in particular with the hook after. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is, notice these are not particularly super exciting, right? And don't look necessarily as fast or sharp because he's on the mitts and the, usually the focus is to kind of hit hard on the mitts. People want to show off. Uh, even though that's not what the mitts are for, the mitts are for you to learn the position. You want to hit the heavy bag hard, but you need to practice those pivots and you need to practice those things here, front foot here. And now he's going to pivot here with the pendulum step, boom. And now he gets back onto the line and throws a combination. Um, and Jesse Rodriguez showing that he can practice this skill not just in his shadow boxing, not just on the mitts, not just on the heavy bag, but in relation to a very quick target on that double in bag here. Um, just like everyone should practice, okay? It's very important. Um, and real quick, if you guys are interested in a double in bag or, or reflex bag or mine, I did the video actually with the Cobra bag, Cobra bag mastery, um, which will teach you how to pendulum step, how to control, how to shoot one, two ones, how to throw combinations, how to throw power shots on the bag. Um, it'll teach you how to set all that stuff up with the footwork, but also with the pendulum steps, as you see uh, Mr. Rodriguez doing here and here into a combination. Um, and the video series will teach you to do that, so check that out. It's in the, uh, in the description below, uh, Double End Bag Mastery. Um, but anyway, uh, it's very important that you practice it at low speeds for power in high speeds so that you can actually make the move work in real combat here. Uh, as we see these ones here, just incredibly quick here. Boom, really, really nice. And then very, very quick here, even though there's a lot of fat on there. Uh, once he gets to that position, boom, he gets here, and he's got the angle. Uh, he's already taken the correct position and landed a great shot. Um, and it was just too quick for Rungvazai to, to react, and that's going to be a skill that he gets more so here uh, by practicing it on the double end bag than on the mitts or the heavy bag or whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, I actually thought it was uh, probably one of the best performances of the year. Um, I thought it was, uh, not only was it a pretty good fight, um, but, but this kid keeps impressing. He keeps showing that uh, people need to stop calling him kid or boy or whatever. Um, this is one of the guys that I guess he's, I, I, he should be on the pound for pound list. You know, moving up however many divisions, fighting this guy, beating that guy decisively. Uh, quadras, right? And then knocking out Rung the side, even though it wasn't like a knockout, he's probably going to recover. Maybe it was coming anyway. Um, we didn't even get to see him hit second gear, uh, and for the most part, it looked like he was he was kind of beating Rung the side up, dominated him in the boxing, um, was setting traps, and uh, the only thing that he's kind of got going for him negatively is uh, 
Um, Pali Malinaji describes it as, as fighting at one speed, right? Like Gary Russell, right? Um, and that's the idea of probing, right? He doesn't probe as much or control with his hands as much. Um, but his first contact in the boxing games that he knows how to play, um, he's very good at all his boxing games. Um, he's very good at uh, punching power, right? He's very good at getting into position, as you can see, using the pendulum step offensively, going to the forward or going backwards, um, going to the left of his opponent or to the right, able to set up punches, um, and then get into position to land hard shots. Um, he does all those things uh, really well. <clears throat> um, and I think he's one of the one of the fighters, uh, one of the few fighters in boxing today that that understand what games they're playing with their opponent. Again, um, boxing is full of little games that you play with your opponent to kind of set them up. Um, but we only have two hands. We only have two positions. Um, there's only so many punches. Uh, so th there are all these little micro games that we got to play with our opponent um, in order to set punches up. And, and those games wind up being right using a probing jab and getting your opponent to try to counter your jab. Right? Silly stuff like that, obviously. Right? Baiting them with a probing right hand, or you know. But that's just how boxing works. And uh, he seems to be very good at first contact. He's got some pretty good pull counters, again, um, and then able to fight off of his own offense, right? Shooting his own one twos and then pivoting off of them uh, when his opponent has to has to reset or do A, B, C, or D, um, and he's able to set up more offense. So not only being able to fight off of his opponent's punches, but being able to set up and fight more off of his own. Um, so uh, it, anyway. This is exactly what you want from like a young prospect, you know. And uh, um, as far as like pound for pound, you know, obviously it's still um, early to put him high on the list. But I think he's got to make top ten. Um, I think he has to, uh, if especially if your people are thinking about putting Jamel Charlo on the list. Jamel Charlo's gone fifty fifty, right? Is Jim is is uh. Tony Harrison, a pound-for-pound -pound fighter? That guy has a win over him. Is Brian Castaño a pound-for-pound -pound fighter? That guy arguably has a win over him. I know he knocked him out. Good job. That was great. Devin Haney, who won all his titles from, from one guy who was not pound-for-pound. -pound. Is that pound-for-pound? Or are we going to give pound for pound to the guy who went up two weight divisions, beat one of the top guys, and then beat the brakes off the next one of the top guys? Right? Anyway, I think that, um, I think that this guy is uh, he's the real deal. People should be paying attention to him. Uh, and um, I think that uh, I saw someone put out a, a headline. I think they were saying that uh, this guy beats Inoue in two years. And I think in two years, he makes it look really, really, really easy. But I think he beats the crap out of him today. You know, I think that he beats Inoue today. Um, I think a lot of times Inoue's rhythm is not very good. And this guy is, that's another thing, right? So let's talk just pound for pound list a little bit, okay? A little pound for pound fantasy. What is pound for pound, right? Why do we talk about it? Okay, so pound for pound, number one, there are a few factors, right? You can be super well-trained. You can be super well-trained and be fast and be hard to fight. Think Errol Spence, well-trained, trains hard, works hard, hard hard as hell to fight. Until somebody beats him, he's going to be pound for pound. He's got almost all the belts at welterweight, um, even though pound for pound, I actually think, uh, should be reverse, reserved for people who have fought and held titles for uh, more than one weight division, um, even though I don't think Bam Rodriguez has gotten... Uh, multiple weight divisions, and that would actually kind of exclude Golovkin as well, ironically. Um, but um, I think that that there needs to be some kind of defining characteristic. It can't just be like, oh, he's like my favorite fighter, you know, whatever, whatever. Because again, someone like Jamel Charlo shouldn't be on the pound for pound list because he's barely beating his own division, right? Now, if he takes those rematches, knocks those guys out, great for him, and then he moves up, and then he beats everyone. Even if he takes two more losses going up to middleweight, or, uh, yeah, middleweight, but then he beats up whatever generation is there when he gets there. He beats them all up, takes two more losses. He's 60 and four, but now he's the undisputed middleweight champion. Fucking pound for pound. Definitely. 
100%. He did it in two weight divisions. He cleared him out. He fucked him up. Now he's the champion. Two weight divisions he did that at, that's pound for pound. That's tough, right? Until he gets beat again, right? But, um, but, uh, single weight division, I don't think so. You know, it, it, it's tough because, like, oh, how do we backtrack, you know? But anyway, styles, right? Very well trained fighters. Lomachenko is probably the most well trained fighter on the planet. There's nobody on the on the planet that trains like Lomachenko. That's as fast as he is. Uh, even though he doesn't hit as hard, um, he sees his his he sees things coming better than other people. He's just faster physically and mentally, uh, and that's because he's one of the most well trained fighters on the planet. Um, and that's pound for pound, right? That's one of the ways you get on the pound for pound list, just being super well trained. The other, Terence Crawford. No offense to Bo Mack, um, and. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny with Errol Spence throwing shade at him about uh, Bo Mack having like, you know, 0-3 pro record or something like that. Um, and then, you know, some people say uh, people become world champions not because of their coach, but in spite of them, you know, and that's like a really interesting idea. You know, coaches get lucky or whatever, whatever, you know. But um, uh, Terrence Crawford is not one of the most well-trained fighters in boxing. He's not, but he understands the games of boxing better than anyone on the planet. I don't think there is anyone who knows what you're trying to accomplish more in the ring than Bud Crawford. Um, and that's, again, it's a, a, another distinction. And, and I think when you're thinking about pound for pound, for pound um, even though uh, Bam Rodriguez here is not, I'll say, he doesn't have the most tools, right? Some of the probes are missing from his game, um, the ability, some catching punches, blocking punches, um, but being able to use some of the probes uh, to slow the pace down and set hard shots up, um, even though he has the speed, right? Which is where the well-trained part comes in, right? And that's another thing. Bam Rodriguez is one of the most well-trained fighters in boxing, Top 10 for sure. There's Lomachenko. There's Usyk. Usyk may be more well-trained than uh, Lomachenko. Um, maybe not. But uh, from where I'm counting, actually, the list ends there. <laughs> and then Bam Rodriguez. Nobody trains. Nobody has the speed that these guys have. You know, Crawford's fast. And that may be where, where Crawford struggles a little bit with Errol Spence is that Crawford's not always super well-trained. He's not always, I don't want to say sharp, but because he knows the game so well, he trusts himself. And I think you know, that's why sometimes he winds up being a little bit of a slow starter. Um, but anyway, not to like talk about that. I'm super excited about that fight too. Crawford versus Spence, I think. Anyway. I think uh, Bam Rodriguez is one of the most well-trained and capable fighters on the planet. I think that he uses the, the tools, um, and I've been trying to do a lot of film study on him in his, uh, his training and stuff. There's just uh, one of the problems with the We Fight How We Train series is people started to pay attention to what they were putting out. You guys noticed Devin Haney's last, oh, that's all we feel comfortable putting out, right? Bill Haney said that. That's all we're comfortable showing. And then he closed the the media. When was the last time you guys saw any actual footage of Canelo Alvarez training? I know that every day people put out new videos of it, but I haven't seen anything since Bivol, not even before Bivol. Like, I saw a couple of new videos at the beginning of the Bivol camp, and then nothing. So the We Fight How We Train series is on its way out. You know, people are realizing how valuable their footage is, how valuable what, what other people can see. Um, and uh, anyway, from what I've seen, Bam Rodriguez is one of the most well-trained uh, fighters uh, on the planet. And he seems to know, at least especially on first contact um, and second contact, I don't usually use that term, um, but after his initial engagement of his one-two or his one or this, he understands how to make more offense off of that going forward. Um, even though he doesn't have, again, the fainting and probing controls, right? The probing ones. Um, uh, 
I think that he's definitely one of the the pound for pound best fighters on the planet for sure. Um, um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know who he's gonna fight next. I don't know when uh, when he'd move up to fight Inoue because Inoue is gonna be probably moving up too. But uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, anyway, if uh, if you're interested again and you want to learn how to use the double end bag again, it's super important to understand how to use all the tools. It's super important to know how to use um, all the equipment. Uh, shadow boxing is super important. Um, all of those things separately contribute to your ability to fight um, in different and meaningful and impactful ways. And if you want to learn how to use the double end bag, check it out. It's only forty nine ninety nine. Um, or if you sign up to my personal co uh, Patreon and you want personalized boxing coaching. Um, if you sign up, it's 50 bucks to sign up, 50 bucks a month. You send in videos, and every single time you send in videos, I will critique them, and I will teach you how to get better using your own video, your own shadow boxing, heavy bad work, uh, double in bad work. Um, all the, the drills, all the things that you do in your training, I will take a look and analyze and teach you how to do them better, okay? Um, and then if you sign up for the Patreon, I will also send you a double and bag video, uh, the double and bag mastery video that I'm talking about in here for forty nine ninety nine for free. Okay, uh, so check it out. It's um, it's really cool the programs that I got going on right now and the way that I'm teaching and the way that people are growing and um, yeah. Anyway, a um, couple updates. I'm still in the UK right now, so anybody who's in the UK that wants to meet up, let me know. Um, I'll be going down to the uh, Aberfeldy Boxing Gym tomorrow at around 11. Um, yeah, I think 10. But anyway, you guys, nobody's going to have seen this video in, in time to go. But uh, um, I'm, in, I'm in London for a couple more weeks. Uh, got a few things going on. Um, a few things that didn't pan out. Um, and uh, still, still very hopeful of some things to, uh, to take place. But... Um, um, yeah, if, uh, also, if you guys want to check out the full film study of this fight, it's on Patreon. Uh, also, we've been doing a lot of Gennady Golovkin versus Canelo, uh, three, uh, film studies on Patreon, uh, like a ton of them, <laughs> hours and hours of content, if you guys want to check it out. Um, it's 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month, and also, if you check out the $50 Patreon, you get access to all the film studies as well. Um, and on Patreon, you don't just get access to the new film studies, you get access to the old ones, nearly a thousand videos. Um, tons and tons and tons of training videos of my first year of Patreon where I taught coaching live uh, to people who would just send in videos and I would do all the analysis and coaching and give them drills and stuff. Uh, but anyway, check it out. Um, yada, yada, yada. Um, having fun in the UK. Later, guys.